Welcome to the Grounded Reason Podcast Halloween episode. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> Pull the strings. Welcome to the Ground Reason Podcast, uh, Halloween edition. Um, it's hysterical that you actually did the count laugh yeah, during I could, that. I couldn't help it. I do it for during my the kids. They love, they well, love Sesame Street. Did, so. I, did I tell you that we went uh, when I went down to Halloween Horror Nights, there was like um, a... Okay, I went with my friend Chip, and they have bars. It's because they take... Basically, let me back up. They take Universal Studios in... Florida, yeah. and they basically turn it into multiple haunted houses, and it sounds amazing. Well, and it's universal, so that it's like right. quality, like, really good haunted houses. Yeah. Well, we went to this one, and it was most of them are movie based. Like they, like they had Ash vs. Uh, Evil Dead. I mean, yeah, Ash vs. Evil Dead this year, which is the one I was really jealous. About. Yeah, they did Saw. They did all kinds of you know different things. But then they had a couple that were just like of their own creation, like you know, kind of. And there was one called like the Hive. And it was a vampire hive. It was like a oh, house. That, that's creepy. But it was like your modern kind of like it's not like it was kind of more of like your scary like nosferatu kind of looking vampires, yeah, yeah, yeah. but more modern. Um, but Chip so and like, I. What, what was that? Um, 30 Days of Nights type thing? Yes, exactly like that. Yeah. Like that. The, Ala- the one that happens in like Alaska, yeah. Alaskan yeah, town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, similar to that. So. We go in, um, and the it, okay. They also at Universal Studios they put bars everywhere. Like sure, there's bar like they these stand up bars are everywhere. People are drinking and having a good time. Chip and I we went to this one like towards the end of the night, and we were staying at a hotel on property. So you can just guess where we were right. at this point. You're in stumbling distance. Well, yeah, because we're not driving anywhere. We're going sure. into this thing, and at this point. The person behind us is like terrified. So <laughs> I look at Chip and I was like, we need to like, you know, make this a little easier for her. So the first vampire jumps out and I go, Von Vampire, ah, ah, ah. And then immediately another one jumps out and Chip goes, do, do. do. We counted every single <laughs> vampire in the count voice. It was like 20 vampires that by the time we got through. 20 Right, right, right. Vampires. And they were like, uh, uh, the, by uh, the end, the girl's not screaming anymore. She went from, she went through all of the phases from like, like all the stages hysterical <laughs> laughter to it was funny at 10 guys. <laughs> right, yeah. right. <laughs> and we just kept going i'm sure and I, I like i don't know like there must be some backroom communications like when you're going through the room because like by the time we got to vampire 18 19 and 20 like their hearts were just not just in it they're it just in. like fuck you count guys like <laughs> boo you know <laughs> that's great uh yeah so so <laughs> so that's that's kind of like the flavor of today's episode is I wanted to talk about Halloween episode, like uh, horror movies that you can stream in time for Halloween, which when this goes out will be happening this pretty, weekend. Yeah, pretty soon after. So you wanted to go first there, Joel? I was just going to say like the big three offerings. Well, like, what, what Dennis asked me to kind of like check out is, if you want to watch scary movies or scary, you know, TV series, like what's the channel, you know, for lack of a better term, streaming service, well, they, the proper term to really check into? Yeah. I mean, yes. Yeah, so I was going to go with like name a few on each that are good. Like well, cause people have different ones, too. So but if you did the research on which one's the best, that I, makes the show I'll, better. I'll give you my personal opinion I'll, on now which I'm, one you've I piqued think. my interest I'm, okay. I'm glad you so, went this route so i i gotta say first of all best uh series like for uh yeah that's right i have awards that's uh, a, the, the, the grounded the, reason the horror, horror series <laughs> no one gives a shit no. <laughs> and the winner is the bruce winner campbell is. ash Evil dead bruce campbell cannot be here today so uh, uh, man, joel will be accepting if he's his walked award in on his all of a sudden 
uh, <laughs> in, in, right over this pizza shop that we Joel have. Joel will own. be accepting every award tonight on someone's behalf. Uh, <laughs> I'll get up and say, I can't believe I won again. You know, thank you so much. It was so unexpected. Um, but what I would say is that uh, Netflix this year right now is putting out, I'd say, two of the best shows there are on television for like a good, legit, creepy, scary... No, these are TV shows, not movies? Yeah. Okay. And now, one of them I... One of them, you know, right up front, I will say I am actively watching, and I love, and it's fantastic, and I'll tell you all about it. The other one... I saw the first season. I'm highly anticipating the second season. So we'll start with that. That's Stranger Things. Oh, yeah. That so, comes out. Uh, yeah, October like 27th, I believe. Yeah, it cannot and wait. So that is uh, a Netflix original. It's fantastic. Or at least the first season was fantastic. Who knows? The right? first season you was amazing. Tell. Yeah, you can never By the tell. way, Allison said uh, for Halloween, because uh, Penny... Penny's never seen Stranger Things, but she's seen pictures of Eleven, and for some she reason, to go is Eleven. She loves Eleven. I don't know what it because Penny's like seven. It's pretty cool. She saw Eleven. She's like that girl's. She said that girl's great. I want to be her for Halloween, and I was like, okay, but like she's like, can I watch Stranger Things? I'm like, no, not yet. No, probably not. But Allison said that we should dress Penny up as Eleven, and we should go with Spinal Tap. That's fantastic. <laughs> you turn things up to Eleven. Yeah. Oz louder. They go to eleven. It's almost as good as that. Uh, the best costume I've ever heard, like for come like a punny mashup costume, yeah. is a. Uh, I can't remember who said it. I think it was Chris Hardwick, but I'm not sure. Uh, Luke Skywalker, Texas Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at mashups from uh, one of the comic cons that's going on, and it was Snow White Walker. Nice. Was, yeah, that's a good I was one. like, that's really good. And it was Walter White Walker. That was another. Oh, that's one. another good one. Yeah, but anyways, um, so Stranger Things, obviously, that's a a big draw uh, for a lot of people out there. And if you haven't watched the first season, I highly recommend it. Really, really is great. Um, it really captures like what it it's very strange. Like I think Dennis well. and I have talked about it before. Yeah, I'm sorry, couldn't help it. But um, it captures, like, the the 80s and, like, a lot of the subtleties of what it was like. And it does in it in such period. a way that it's not... It's not campy. It's not at all. No. It feels like you're watching an 80s movie, but it doesn't have all the camp that would be associated with yeah, watching an actual like you're just 80s peering thing. in on a, a period piece. Yeah, yeah. Right? And like, they do a great job of, like, hitting all of the, like nostalgia cultural high notes yeah high yeah. notes there too like the game the, the, the and i'm no spoiler here but the, the the show opens with kids playing dungeons and dragons right so it's just perfect when it comes to that sort of well, era like i had a very like, the gate kind of feel i've seen it. stills of the new season come out uh-huh coming out and the kids uh that are the the main characters of the show are probably like 11 year old kids roughly i mean around uh, about yeah. 11 12 something like that yeah i would say like yeah you're 10 11 tw- tweens. 12 they're like tweens there. yeah and uh they're all dressed up for halloween as, <laughs> as the ghost as the ghostbusters right and it's perfect because it's uh three uh young white kids and one african-american kid so right. it like works out perfectly for the ghostbusters um anyway so stranger things on netflix that's an award winner for me now right? are you staying with netflix here yeah, my next show. Okay, it's also Netflix. It is called Mind Mind Hunter. Oh, I haven't seen this. Seen that yet? Yeah. So, what this is is for those of you that like your horror less strange fiction e right, like and more, I'll say Silence of the Lambs ish, right? There's there's definite overtones of that in this show, and it's because it's actually based on like a, a horror suspense more. Yeah, like and it's show. based. It's all based on an actual book that was written about the actual group from the FBI that decided in the I think it was the late seventies, early yeah, late seventies, uh, to start studying. Or no, 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 no. It was more like the early to mid-70s, to start studying serial killers 
to understand what um, the mind of a serial killer would be like. Okay. And uh, I think Kemper, who was a... I forget where he uh, committed his crimes, but, like, he was, like, one of their first candidates, like, first people they actually sat down with. And it was all done as, like, kind of a side project in the FBI okay. for, like... Uh, like a year, like completely unendorsed by the FBI and so on. Fascinating show. And like not a lot of gore, uber creepy, uber creepy. That's kind of what I like. I'm not a big, it's all description. Like gore, gore shows to me are like kind of like funny almost. Like I don't, it's uh, it doesn't, gore doesn't really bother me as it's mm. what they call in wrestling cheap heat. Do you yeah, know what exactly. That term? Like, so cheap heat is when you walk out. And you go, uh, there's no better looking fans than the ones in Cleveland. Right. And you're in Cleveland, right? right and everyone right. cheers. Or no one's as dumb as the fans in Cleveland. Right. And everyone boos, right? Right. It's cheapy. It's easy applause, right? Like, right. And so gore or a jump scare yeah. is and easy. I, I think it's cheap. I don't, I mean, I, I love, don't get me wrong. I still like it. I like, but. okay. I like gore effects from more of like an artistic standpoint to where yeah. I've been like, that's really cool to how they did that. But very rarely does a gore effect really get to me. No, it never bothers me. It's not why I watch a horror movie. There, there are some that get to me, but they have to be really, really weird. Like um, The Thing. Like the original I was gonna, The yeah. Thing done in like 1982. Was it eighty two? I think so. Yeah, that's Carpenters, about right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. th that was a remake of a, but it, well, but much better done yeah, yeah, than yeah. the original. In in like there are effects in that that I think hold up to today. Well, I was going to mention that's actually one of I was going to I was going to talk about because um, that's on Hulu actually. Which um, one? The, the thing. Oh, the actual the thing. Yeah, yeah but we, let's well let's stick with Netflix. Well, first. so so really quick, I, I would say Netflix. If you want to watch series. I think there's 10 episodes of Mindhunter, and what was it for Stranger Things, 10 or 12 episodes? Yeah, I think it was 10. Don't hold me to that, though. Yeah, and, you know, the Mindhunter episodes run around the first four or so or right about an hour, and then they start trailing to about 45 minutes. Okay. Um, and there It were, sounds interesting. I definitely yeah, it's it really, really good. So far, I'm probably about eight episodes in, so I haven't finished it yet. But, I mean, from what I've seen, I would say it's a contender for, you know, taking the title this year. Yeah. Um, so, for a series, that's what I came up with. Okay. I would say Netflix, really, really strong. Yep. Uh, for movies, it sounds like we both have some interesting ones. So, well, why don't for, you go ahead? Netflix, I was going to... There's two modern uh, horror movies on Netflix right now that I recommend everyone see. Um, okay. The first is It Follows. Oh, yeah. Have you seen it? Oh, I love It okay. Follows. I, okay, here's my... I I think we talked about this. I love It Follows for the... Okay, I have a very, very odd, like, relationship with this movie. Because the first, like, two acts, basically the first hour, I'm sitting there thinking that it's horror genius mm. and... Like, to a degree of, like, this movie is going to be one of the best horror movies of all time. It kind of petered out. The third act really kind of ruins the movie almost. Like, it kind of just throws it back into a pretty good horror movie. Because it kind of, and I don't want I'm not going to say what it exactly does, but in my mind, it broke all of the rules that it set up in the first two acts. Yeah. Yeah, we did talk about this when we were at LA Podfest. Okay, And okay. I, I would agree... Uh, I still thought but that the, the first two acts were so strong. The first two acts are like horror genius. Yeah. And it's basically like the basic premise, because it's an odd, it's an odd premise. Um, and it's really like, I guess the best way to explain it is it's a sexually transmitted monster. Yeah, it's sexually transmitted demon. Yeah. Right? So basically, um a, a demon will follow someone uh a, a forever at a very slow creepy pace until it catches that person and then it will kill them in a horrible horrible manner yep. um the demon though can assume any human form yeah and 
can't be seen by anyone Anybody else. except here's the catch if you can sleep with someone then you pass the demon on to them yeah and the demon will start following that other person right so basically anyone who's encountered the demon at some point can see the demon and so basically people can keep passing this demon on to someone else by sleeping with someone but once the demon kills its prey it'll just go back up the line yeah. to who passed it on so you you never know when the demon will be gone yeah you you basically end up and this is one of the things that's clever about that movie is you end up in these moral quandaries where like the uh, characters have to decide, like, are they comfortable with passing on this horrible, horrible thing to someone else or, you know, keeping it to themselves? Right. And we really haven't spoiled anything by explaining, like, the basic no, premise here. But Like, if, if this was a review, you would read this, right. um, like, on the back of the dvd exactly you know? so but but i mean and that's why this i mean the, just the way they do it and just the, the way they shoot the demon or whatever kind of following the person yeah. it's just this eerie creepiness that's just unsettling so <laughs> and it's so good it's like the first two acts in the movie are so good and it's worth seeing just for that so as a quick quick aside um iTunes University. That's right. I'm plugging iTunes University. Uh, I took a Halloween course, Halloween themed course they had from the University of Alabama uh, a while back, and it was zombies in literature. Oh, and it was awesome. Yeah, I'm sure. And the idea about it, and I just did it for a lark, but the idea behind it was, or at least what this professor was arguing was that what is so unnerving about a zombie is that they are uncanny yeah right and in the quite. traditional i think yeah. we've talked about this yeah. I mean, yeah so like a werewolf is scary because it's a big monster that's going to eat you but a zombie is particularly scary right because it looks almost right right like if you're talking about like a zombie, you know, like not one of the the ones that are really juicy, like you see on um, uh, The Walking Dead, right. right? But like a freshly turned zombie is particularly unnerving because not that long ago that was someone you knew, right? And they they seem they look like who you know, like take Pet Cemetery. Yeah, which is actually Pet Cemetery is actually my, a movie that's one of the ones that's I think I it's probably think one of the it's best. on Hulu. I, yeah, it is. I, I I think that's well. Wait a minute, is it? It's, yeah, okay. no, I'm almost certain. Uh, I will. I, it was. I have it on of, the list here somewhere. No, it's one of mine. Don't you do it? Okay, I won't. It's on Prime. Oh, you did it. Sorry, you can still cover it. I mean, I'm just saying it's on Prime. Oh, I thought you were still recording. I'm re I'm recording. Well, don't make fun of me. Uh, what? That's our shtick, man. What are you talking about? Uh, yeah, no, it's it's on Hulu. Oh, is it on both? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it's on it's on Prime as well. Yeah, and and like Hulu actually has some really really strong offerings. They I'll do. get to in a few minutes. Um, for for horror, right? Like in everything else, eh, I don't know, but horror is kind of my category. Um, but so Pet Cemetery, you look at like a lot of the ghouls. Like in Pet Cemetery, mm -hmm. and they are really terrifying. And it's because they seem almost, especially the little kid, seems oh, yeah. almost right, but just a little off, uh -huh. right? And that that's what they were arguing in this. And I think that's what It Follows does so well. Oh, it does. It really does. Is like the people look right, and they do it with distance a lot too, where it's like, and the music. It's the distance yeah. and the music. The music they use, I don't it's know. Amazing. It's very good. It's so just the it's a master class in horror, the first Yeah, hour. so I don't want to harp on it, but it follows I can't say enough good things about it. Yeah, it's it's good. Um the other one though is one of my actually, I would say one of my all time favorite I, I think I know where you're going here, but go. Psycho drama kind of horror yeah. movies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean it, it ranks for me it ranks up there with like the shining 
Um, okay. Is I... the Babadook. Yeah. The Australians put some good horror out there. Yeah, and I, I any anything I really say about the Babadook, I think will kind of give it away. It's really good. How it's about just that? yeah. It's just it's it's excellent, and it is done on a, a shoestring budget for the most part, yeah. and it's all practical effects, and it is creepy and as hell. And I can say this without giving it away: there is a mother and a son duo in this, yeah, and they are both fantastic yeah they're great in it and it's kind of a it's 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 kind of more of like a psycho horror type kind of yep. yeah you know, there's movie. not that's, a lot of there's i don't think any gore and there's it's a, a lot of suspense oh a ton of suspense um, which is frankly generally more scary yeah i think so too um and but it i i strongly i know the title is kind of silly um for a lot of people because like I was, have you seen the Babadook? And they're like, what, what is that? Like, is that like Yo Gabba Gabba? I'm like, no, 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 no. It's just, it's, it's way different. Um, right. And, and honestly, like just the title doesn't do it justice. You, you got to take it. a little leap of faith. You on do. That one. It's a, it's a really, really good horror movie. Yep. And no, those, those two agree. are on uh, Netflix. So did you have another one on Netflix? Um, on Netflix? No. Did well, I take one of yours? On, actually, I think I might. Um, yeah. So there's a couple others on Netflix that are, I would say, classics, but not ones that um, were top of mind. Mm-hmm. So I'll give you two, like, for lack of a better term, horror comedies that are classics uh, that are on Netflix. Oh, you're going to take one of them. That if you're in the mood. Uh, well, probably. Is Alan Tudyk in one of them? Yeah, probably. Okay. I think so. <laughs> Young Frankenstein oh, okay, is the okay. first one. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, which is, you know, it's Mel Brooks film. It's my favorite Mel Brooks film, even though I love Spaceballs. Um, but I think Young Frankenstein is as good as it gets for that. And, uh, you know, it's a Gene Wilder, you know, hard to beat. Um, and then uh, Gremlins. Oh, okay. No, you didn't take mine. Okay, okay, Gremlins is horror comedy. S- horror com- it's no, it's, it's horror comedy based around is Christmas. It comedy? Yeah, I guess. It's yeah, comedy. no, no, it's totally comedy. The second There's... one's comedy, straight yeah, up. The second one's a straight comedy. up comedy. The first but, one, but the first one's horror comedy yeah. in that it is meant to be scary. Uh, it's it's very much actually the modern version of this is Krampus. If yeah, you've not seen Krampus yeah. yet, which I think is on Netflix. Yeah, I um. It's okay. It's all right. I, I liked it, but I mean Gremlins is Gremlins great. is great. Fantastic. Um so that those would be my two horror comedies that I would definitely check out if you had the chance. Uh I'm sure you've seen them at this point. Um the other ones on Netflix that I think are obviously worth a mention just because they're amazing films. Uh Jaws. Jaws is arguably one, it, just my opinion. It's the first arguably, film. yeah, it's 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 well, arguably it's like Psycho. Maybe Psycho and Jaws are probably the two like like the monster, like the modern slasher film. I think originated with Jaws. Honestly, yeah, I would say Jaws is probably one of the best scary movies ever made. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like I remember being a child and watching Jaws because I had a misspent youth. Right. Like uh-huh. and I when I say child, I mean like seven, um, which a seven year old should not be watching Jaws. But I am pretty sure I did. I let Anyways, my, I let my 10 year old watch Jaws recently. So Jaws is so good. She liked it. Uh, I remember being freaked, like legitimately freaked out of the water. And they tell stories like of when Jaws came out that people were scared to actually. Get oh, in the I'm water. sure. Yeah, it was unnerving. The other one that I think is great for a little bit of camp, but also a lot of creep, is Children of the Corn. Oh, the I love, I love the original Children of the Corn. I think the corn. original Children of the Corn is fantastic. It is also available on Netflix if you've never seen it. I highly recommend it. There's nothing scarier than like creepy ass kids, cre- man. creepy kids, creepy ass kids. Cause I'm telling you, 
I love my children. Creepy I think kids they're wonderful. S- but if one of terrifying. them came up and started yelling Malachi at me, y- yes. I'm punting them. Right. Right? Yeah. No one's going to call child services, right? Uh, No, that was a joke. So I think was? I think it I think, bro, wasn't it? Yes. I hope so. Okay, good. Yes. All right. <laughs> so, so, all right. Then, so we're done with Netflix then, right? Yeah. Okay. Let's move on to Hulu. All right. Hulu. So Hulu, I don't know of any shows, like actual series on Hulu offhand that are horror-ish, but there's a couple of movies that I think I, there's some really a like. solid lineup of movies on Hulu right yeah. now. Yeah. I actually was going to give them my like best ranking for for movies titles that are horror movies. Yeah. Well, I will say yes. They they have deepest bench. It's the deepest bench. But Netflix happens to have like two of my favorites. Two, two. Well, actually, I would say five or six. Well, yeah, yeah, ones. that's true. And then almost everything else is garbage, right? Like, right. I, but now Hulu's, that's the horror category, right? The right, horror category true. is it's it is feast or famine. Five percent amazing, ninety five percent garbage. It's like cliff diving. Yeah. It's grand champion stuff on a rock. That's really your two yeah. two categories. Two categories of. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm going to start out. I with stole a, that joke from someone. I think that's great. <laughs> I'm going to start out with a weird one. And I, I've, especially since I spend a fair amount of time, uh, talking about like gore, not being all that. This one's pretty gory. So for anyone who's into that, and even if you're not, this one's pretty legit. It's high tension. Oh, I heard that was high, solid. High Tension is very it. good. It's a French movie, uh, all subtitled, which I'm not a big fan of, generally speaking, because I'm lazy. I don't mind in horror. And yeah. I, because I don't, I, I want to, you got to pay attention anyway. Well, there's also normally not that much dialogue in horror, right? right? Like, so, eh, it's kind of light on the reading. Yeah. It's a pretty damn good horror movie. Um. So I highly recommend that. I don't want to give anything away. So I'm going to kind of... Just say trust you on that one? Yeah. Uh, Pet Cemetery is also on Hulu. And Pet Cemetery, I, with the exception of The Shining, is probably the best Stephen King horror movie ever made. Ooh. Yeah. I mean, The Shining is a masterpiece. Like, Kubrick's The Shining, because let's forget, or not forget, or maybe forget, that there was another one made with the guy from Wings that aired on, like, NBC. Oh, was there? Oh, yeah. Oh, I didn't know this. It was a made-for-TV Shining? Yeah, and it's closer to the book, which is a positive. It wasn't made by Stanley Kubrick, which Which is is a a pretty big big negative. negative, Um. So those would be my first two, I would say. What do you, what do you have? Well, okay. Well, we already talked about the thing. Yeah, and can't say enough about the thing. It's amazing. Okay, the the the, the weird thing about the thing is it was way ahead of its time. Way. Because yeah. the effects and the thing hold up now, I say. Oh, like yeah. I think they do. I I also think that um, it's solid practical effects. In that, yeah, and in that that's movie. what I was going to say is that practical effects, and by that, basically, uh, in case you're not used to the jargon, not like we're movie people, but we, I don't know, listen to a lot of we hate movies. Right. So <laughs> we pick up on their jargon. Um, in practical effects are basically like anything that is uh, actually involving moving parts and not a computer. Yeah, right. essentially, yes. Like, uh, so the thing is like a basically of, all puppetry. Yeah, like stuff. blood bursts, like yeah, and stuff like that. And, yeah, exactly. And like, you know, puppetry and things like that. And it is so, so well done. It is. It, it's amazing. And the thing is, it, it got it, it got panned by the critics when it came it's out in 82. I mean, because they, they said it was basically like kind of like a gore fest. And, but it, by today's standards, I don't really think so at all. Like... I I, I, mean, I it, don't it, know. It is, but it's not like it, it wouldn't turn audiences off. No, 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 no. That I would agree with. The only thing I would say is that the gore in the thing resonates at a more 
guttural. It is level. visceral. Yeah, it's yeah. Like this, like, uh, it is. It really is. Like it, you, you. So a lot of horror when gore happens, it's cartoonish, right? right? Like so, it doesn't doesn't really. This bug you. feels kind of real. This feels real enough, even even though what's happening is clearly surreal, right? To where you're like, yeah, yeah, I'm not comfortable with this. Yeah. So I mean, really, it's kind of just your it it the premise isn't too far off it's just kind of like you know your killer alien kind of thing that yeah. can assume it's a pretty simple premise you know any form for the most part um and just for the pra- for the effects alone this movie is worth seeing i think it's a classic i think there's a lot of suspense in it too oh personally. definitely it's a must watch for any horror yeah, fan yeah i mean if you if you like horror movies especially like um our listeners of our age or older probably saw the thing, right? Yeah, like if you're think. younger than say yeah, I would us, think you probably missed this one. If you're you if you're missed it. if if you were yeah. born in I don't know like 1985 or later, you probably yeah haven't seen this movie or heard of this movie unless you have like an older brother or sister or somebody who introduced you to it. I'd strongly recommend going out and check out this movie. Um, if you're old like us and you haven't old seen it, fogies, go, go see it. Yeah. Um, so I'm gonna. Oh yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, to... I want to backpedal for a second because you brought up the thing. Um, so the thing, um, in this movie I'm gonna talk about now, and movies like In the Mouth of Madness and oh, yeah, there's a good. bunch of others, uh, fall generally into like Lovecraftian horror, right? Mm-hmm. So strange fiction, like, is the other category that they fall into. So Lovecraftian and H.P. Lovecraft's like there's something unworldly happening in the story. Mm-hmm. So right in that vein, and this is pretty new. It's 2017 release. It's called The Void. Okay, right? like a open space, like not the like void. not like a vo- not like not the, avoid the noise, not the noise. No, no. Okay, of Domino's pizza of Domino villa- villainy. <laughs> So I will I will tell you um this movie's pretty darn good and it's very reminiscent of the thing. Okay. Um both in practical effects and just kind of like mindset. I'm going to read you really quick a little bit off a of Rotten Tomato for Okay. It. Uh so it has a 73 which if you know anything about horror it's fairly good. is for really horror. good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Rotten Tomato. Yeah, I would think your classics... Horror does not normally do no, that well. Like, your classics, I think, come in around 85, 90. Yeah, so. and this is... Uh, I'll look up the thing in a minute and, and just give you an idea. But uh, because I suspect it will be higher, but... I would think probably it's in our... Like, it's a 85. classic movie, yeah. like you said. Um, this is the critics' consensus. The Void offers nostalgic rush for fans of low-budget 1980s horror and... Legitimate thrills for hardcore genre enthusiasts of all ages. Sign me up. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, it's 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 really a lot of fun. That's on Netflix. Okay. I will have to check that out. Well, and here's the thing. I had, ooh, I don't know, one too many. I just bought the damn thing on iTunes. So, like, I don't even need to watch it on Netflix. I own it. Right? <laughs> like... Uh, cause I really, really liked it, but you know, I'll like, do that sometimes if something's so good, just like say, screw it. I'm going to watch it more than once. What's well, it's that too. And there's almost like, a, I want to throw some cash their way too. For some reason, sure. it's just like, I'll do that, especially with video games. I'm a big fan of doing that with, it's just like, you know, well, back when I used to just shareware games, you yeah. know, back in the day, if, Absolutely. if, uh, if somebody handed me a copy of a game and I played it, I liked it. I would just go out and buy it just, you know, because I thought it was worth buying, even though, even if I wasn't going to play it again, like if someone does a good job with like a piece of media, it deserves some exactly some cash. So, Hey, just real quick. The thing on Rotten Tomato, 82, 82 so you're was, really close. That was close. Um, okay. Some other stuff on Hulu. This is actually kind of a interesting one. I don't know if it's going to be up everyone's, you know, in everyone's uh, wheelhouse here, but let the let the light blah blah blah. Maybe if I can get it out, um, let the right one in. Which one? 
That's the original Swedish version. The Swedish one. Let yeah. Me In, I think, was the American version later on. Is that right? I thought it had the same title, but either no, way. No, it was different titles. The Swedish one is the better one. Yeah. And basically, it's a film about two kids uh, around 12 years old. And it's kind of, they're exploring, I would say, like a close friendship and maybe early on youth romance. You know what I mean? Like that 12-year-old type of you know, romantic feelings. Um, but here's the catch. One of them's a vampire. And it's kind of like, the movie's really kind of like, I look at it as almost like a coming of age film. Yeah. No, in a that's, way. That's really. W- with like I two kind of loner the kids. they're going for. Yeah. And, but, you know, it's, it's a vampire movie. Yep. So it's got all the trappings you would see with like vampire lore. Uh, so it's, it's a really interesting kind of like take on, on the genre and um it's just it's kind of always there's all there's almost like this grim melancholy kind of surrounding the whole movie it is just swedish re- it that's true um it, it just kind of really works and if you kind of want to be creeped out but yet like kind of like in all of a film yeah <laughs> it's 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 really it's one really to good if yeah. you if you're I, mean, I actually would recommend this for people who are, are not necessarily a fan of horror, but just like good films. Well, I would also say um, people that like foreign films. Yeah. Right? Like, um, it's a really good foreign film to it is. check out. It is. Like, it is. Because I think you get, um, like you're saying, like a, a different perspective on how to tell a scary story yeah yeah right? it definitely it's is a different nationality and i mean and them. honestly i i will confess this is probably one of my like top 20 movies of all time i love this wow. movie it's really good it, it's one of my favorites I, yeah I, I would say it's a really really good horror movie um and it's a it's a good movie just in general right right, right? Like, so i mean i don't know i've always i first time i saw it like, unfortunately i did see uh, I was one of the people that saw Let Me In first, and I like that. And I heard someone, my friend told me, you got to see the original. It's yeah. different. Um, There's a couple like that. And like, I saw it, and I was like, and I liked I liked the American version, but I, I mean, I fell in love with the Swedish version. I yeah. thought the Swedish version, it's a different movie. It's, yeah. it, it is. It's just a different thing. Well, altogether. it's like um, if you ever watch The Ring. Oh, American and then Ringu, version, yeah. And then watch Ringu. Yeah. Like, the Japanese version is actually much scarier. Oh, I think so. Um, The American version is pretty darn scary. Don't get me wrong. At talk least, about Uncanny. I mean, that, yeah, her walking but, through that, that well is freaking crazy. I did crazy. not no, appreciate that. does not sit well with me. Yeah. I was actually, when I went and saw The Ring, like the American version, in the theaters, I was on a date. And you have to remember too, because there's been so many copies and uh, of the ring that it's kind of just old hat at this yeah, point. Yeah, now it is. But, but when that came out, oh, was, I there had never been a, with the possible exception of Poltergeist, but I don't even think in Poltergeist this happened. The idea of someone crawling out of a television. Yeah, I know. Right, like right. that. That was like. And you know, and, and the way like they did that. it was so good. And that it, creepy like, ass the effect was really film, nice. It, and there was a jump scare early in the ring, and I was on a date. You know, this is before I met. Is that my in the wife. closet when they open the closet? The closet yes. jump scare. That's a good jump scare. The, I don't like jump the, scares, but that's a good that one. was a really good one. <laughs> and the person in front, of you, I I like that you knew exactly, I knew exactly which one. Yeah, yeah. it's a good jump scare. The it was it was legit. The person they were there was another couple on a date, two or three rows ahead of us. Dropped their like M and M. You were like M and M's hit everywhere <laughs> down the theater. It was hilarious. I felt so bad because it scared the shit out of me too, right? right? But I didn't. I wasn't holding candy, so right. that's the only reason why I didn't do it, right? Like, but anyways, um, yeah. So I, I don't know. I, I would agree. Like, let the right one in. Really good flick. Um, so. Are we ready to move to Amazon? I got a Prime? couple more on. Hulu. Oh, really? Well, okay, yeah, and I'll go, go through these it. quick. Like, I, I suggest okay for creature effects, and I want to say that this is probably one of the best creature effects horror films of the '80s. Um, not a great movie altogether, but just the effects alone, I think it's worth seeing. Is American Werewolf in Love in London? Oh no, I I disagree. 
only in that I would more strongly endorse that movie. Okay, really? I think that movie's, like, totally legit. Here's my thing. I don't like vampire, I mean, uh, werewolf movies. Although there is a really good one called Where, W-E- or W-E-R, which is a English movie based in France. Okay. Really, really good. But go ahead. Well, I mean, I guess my whole thing with the werewolf, it's kind of like, I've always seen it as kind of like a Jekyll and Hyde kind of genre. Yeah, except Hyde doesn't talk and Hyde chose, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, yeah. it takes the whole human element out of it, uh, the monster yeah. side of the house, and it's hard for the human to relate to its beastly self it's there's only no... so interesting right? exactly yeah. so it's it's that's kind of why like i've never really been a big fan of the genre yeah. but american werewolf in london i think is probably the best one i've seen i and... would say it's probably the best werewolf movie ever made okay i do really like where okay where okay and and the creature effects are fantastic way ahead of their time they they're great so their their makeup uh specifically which is a type of practical effect i guess uh one does that mean you're right what the the, the blue yes okay, okay. yeah no, no that was that was my wife saying is that our new sound when effect? the hell are you coming home okay um <laughs> yeah so uh American Werewolf in London with uh, the makeup effects and so on is like, I've, I've read articles back in the day because I'm a dork in like Fangor magazine mm-hmm. about how it's like considered one of the gold standards. Okay. Of that yeah. Era. I, I, I had and a, it's that good. Yeah. I thought so. I mean, I've never seen it at the time. I was amazed at the, oh, what, yeah. what they did with the, with the and there's a couple scenes like the scariest scene in that whole movie is his dream. Oh yeah. Where, yeah. 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 I don't want to spoil it for people, but his dream is the scariest scene yeah, in that whole movie. Yeah. Um, and two other ones that are on Hulu right now that I think are really solid in the more horror comedy genre uh, is Shaun of the Dead. Sure. Great which movie. I think uh, Simon Pegg is uh, he's in that and he's fantastic. Um, I don't think I've ever laughed so hard at like a horror film besides i don't know maybe army of darkness or evil dead 2 yeah i mean evil dead 2 is personal favorite but i i get it shauna of the dead's great yeah um and then the other one um it's kind of i guess cult classic in a way i don't know have you ever seen tucker and dale versus evil yeah i okay. love that movie that movie is great um yeah. and that is another modern horror Doesn't comedy it classic have the guy from firefly yeah alan it? tudyk that's what i thought you were gonna say earlier oh, like that's what i thought you were gonna go with her yeah, yeah yeah he's Jesus. that not only is he the guy from he's not he's Wash from firefly but he's also k2so he does the voice for k2so he does the voice for like uh i know he's in frozen i think he plays uh, weasel Weas- Weaselton uh, or whatever he's, he's the chicken uh, in moana he plays hey hey um the dude is like all over the he's place he's also um king candy from wreck it ralph uh, He's, uh <laughs> Joe the Pirate or whatever it is from what's that movie with Vince Vaughn and Ben Stiller with the uh the gym? Oh, it's driving me insane. Anyways, keep going. I'm gonna look it up while we're talking. The only I'm thinking dodgeball. Dodgeball. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's Pirate Oh, that's Steve. right. He is Pirate Steve. Pirate Steve. That's, that's, that's his name. All about that. He's fantastic. I forgot all about that. Um. Yeah. So he's in. He talk, he's actually great. Doctor and Dale vs. Evil. And I. He's really really good. It's really you know, a movie about misunderstood hillbillies running into some college kids and hijinks ensue. Yeah, I mean, it's a lot of fun. Say say basically, it's a spin on the classic slasher right movie. But we're seeing tons comedy of comedy horror. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's really really good. I would say the only other thing that's worth mentioning on hulu and there are people out there uh i i mean i shouldn't say it that way there's a lot of interesting stuff on hulu uh in this genre we're just hitting highlights but just something to call out um they have a really really deep bench for godzilla they do they They, have i think 10 Godzilla movies, so of varying sorts, meaning going back to the whatever seventies, 
when they made the original Godzillas up to more modern Godzillas. Yeah, and, yeah I, if you're I'm, into that, I dig it. And I'm surprised, like we haven't really, we didn't rehearse this at all. We're kind of just riffing on like our yeah, favorite I'm horror. I'm surprised films. how much crossover there is with but, our- <laughs> but what's really making me laugh here is I was about to go segue. Uh, into amazon and i was gonna lead off with what i was gonna say was uh like bringing it, it actually kind of for me brought back the monster genre like yeah. the big huge mo- mo- like godzilla type yeah, movie, yeah, yeah. cloverfield sure yeah and because cloverfield is essentially it's so funny you mentioned godzilla because i was yeah. just about it's a great segue no, it is, into it cloverfield really is okay so switching to amazon prime cloverfield was kind of a weird mashup of the found, found footage. footage. Yeah, it's like Blair Witch product project hits like Godzilla. Godzilla, kind of. like large monster film. Right, but you know what, though? I think that that's like a match made in movie heaven, that honestly, when you think great about it. Idea. Like, what better way What better way to see a monster film than from like a first-person perspective? Yeah, it was it, honestly, it's really, really well done. Um and really well done um without a lot of pomp and circumstance like right in the way it's done well yeah right? cuz it, it it's not really well yeah i'm sure the the it's clover dude it is because it's all from the point of view of the group of people that have the camera that are running like hell from from the, the monster, monster. So it's not like it's not so much monster focused, which makes it more real. It feels more real because you're kind of like in the moment with these people yep. as they're in New York City while it's being attacked by a massive whatever, whatever the hell it is. Right. So, I mean, I, I think Cloverfield like a really, you know, great film. It's a unique film and I think it's worth worth seeing. Yeah, I think there's, there's a ton of classics on Amazon Prime right now, too. Yeah. And there's. So I had for Amazon Prime, I think where they really, to me, kind of stuck out was like tongue in cheek, tongue in cheek, crappy horror movies. There's a lot of that too, which I love. Yeah. So let me give you an example: Ghoulies One <laughs> and Two, both hilarious. Yeah, because they are awful they're terrible and but as a child watching. i thought they were great right right and like i watched them all through college you know and it, you know well i probably watch them when i get home and uh they're they're just terrible but they're hilarious because yeah. they're they're just not you know they're they're so bad they're good right um Another one that I think is that way, that if you want to see a young girl, Dennis Hopper, slumming it, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. Oh, yeah. Well, 2 is just kind of a mess. Well, it's nowhere near as... It is the... So Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original, is a classic horror movie. It is great. It's also like... It's got... It's it's genre-defining. It is like, genre defining, but it's also kind of like uh it's a Vietnam war protest yeah. film. It's no, like it's, it's it's interesting in that regard. Well, that it's, it, it's the same idea with uh n- the original Night of the Living Dead right. is uh, a commentary on race which is also on Amazon 60s. Prime right now. Yeah. Right. I mean like they're that's what I'm saying It's like horror when it's done well, there's a lot of social commentary. Yeah. Now or when it's done really, really badly, is Ghoulies and Ghoulies is too. Ghoulies. <laughs> or the- <laughs> everything in the middle is not interesting. Right, right, right. It's only when it's really good, right, or really awful. Right. It's either Night of the Living Dead or Chud Two, Bud the Chud. Bud the Chud. <laughs> and, and I think both have their place. Right. I am totally comfortable with watching either one of those. And I think Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two is the other opposite end of the spectrum uh, from Texas Chainsaw Massacre in that Texas uh, Chainsaw Massacre has something to say. Uh Two has nothing to say. No. And it's great. No. Everything after that for all of the rest of that. All the rest of the massacres. They're milk toast. Yeah. Like there's just not anything noteworthy in them at all. But. Man, people are chewing up scenery in two. It's fun. <laughs> they are. They really are. Uh, Pet Cemetery also on Amazon Prime. Yep. Uh, 
You know what else is there? Um, and I hate the, if you take the whole body of work, I hate it. Uh, but the first Saw movie, I think is. It's quite good. I think it's pretty good. Um, I, I mean, the other 47 Saw movies. I think it's, it's all gore. garbage. It's gore porn. Yeah. Um, it's. It's snuff films, right? Essentially, <laughs> um, but the first saw uh, is I, really. I think there's some really well some really good stuff in there. Um, I, like the scene where the guy where like his power goes out and the only thing he can use to see is his flash and his camera. I yeah. think that's a really well done scene. There's nothing like to where him. he keeps hitting the flash, so you don't know what you're gonna see. Like it's black screen flash boom and that's that's just like a really good suspenseful moment through the film that stood out to me um i saw that in a uh horror short recently uh-huh. where basically it was like a lights cutting in and out so a strobe light effect right right um and this ghoul zombie type thing would it was in a mortuary and this zool ga- uh uh, a ghoul zombie type thing would get up and move whenever the lights were off, but whenever the lights would come on, it would freeze again. It was terrifying. <laughs> it was so, it, it, the Dennis is right. It's the, you know, the lights are going out again. Right. That's what's scary. Yeah. And the way he did it with the camera though, like it had that eerie, like, you know, when he hit an old flash shots like yeah. that, Whee! Yeah, like that noise, like just the whole That's thing. That's a chainsaw massacre. It is. It is. But it is. But it they was, made that famous. They did. But I mean, like just to do it like that, like that scene really stuck with yeah. me. In the first saw, I thought it was really well done. The whole story itself is is really good. There's yeah. a great twist at the it's end. It's a good. It's a it's good a solid movie. movie the whole way through. And then you know, yeah, then, two through forty seven. And then the uh, what what do they say in uh, what do they say in uh, Spaceballs? Spaceballs 2, Shoot. the quest for, for more, more money. money. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's it. Oh, you know what? There's a really great, like, if you're into horror, like, I think sometimes when you take horror and you kind of just boil it down um, to a very, like, simple element that you can really find some good horror magic. Yeah. And there's a movie called Mon- The Monster. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like, it's basically, like... A whole movie with just two characters trapped in a car as they're terrorized by a yeah. monster in the woods, and it's really good. It's it's always, for for what it is. It's yeah, really no, I, great. I think that's great. Like uh, I've seen it. I I I believe it is a mother and a daughter. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, and to me. I've always found films with a very minimalist cast, like very few characters, really interesting. Because it's if you can keep me interested mm-hmm. and entertained for an hour and a half to two hours with two people on a screen, yeah. you're doing something right. Right. And that's you how know? the feeling, because this movie, is, this movie really, is good. really keeps you involved the whole time with just two characters, and you're kind of, it's this very suspenseful movie. Yeah. Um, Good. I think it's it's a. I would call it lesser known. I don't know if too many people know. No, I. I mean, like I've got a lot of deep cuts, and I think you do too. So I. I would think that is. It's a not main. Not it's not a big movie. That's what I mean. So I'm thinking, like, if you're not really like follow, if if you're not looking for deep cuts on horror, this is probably something you haven't seen and probably worth checking out. I would say. Yeah. Um. You got anything else? No. I. Well. Uh, one more on Amazon. Prime. Um, it's out now. It just came available um, October seventh. Is the original Blair Witch? Oh, takes place in Maryland, right up down or right up, right up down, Sheesh. <laughs> right down the road. In fact, a lot of um, where that was shot was Seneca State Park, right? Which is like literally, I took my like you know, girlfriend at the time in high school to Seneca State Park to like walk around the lake and whatever. And then next thing you know, like next month, uh Blair Witch comes out and I'm like, ah yeah. right. the unfortunate thing with Blair Witch is it works so well in its time in its time. Yeah, I, I I don't know if it holds up. I don't think it would. Uh like I, I think the whole found footage category in general 
is kind of like overdone. Like you said, well, yeah, it's 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 overdone. I think in you know, come back in a decade or two, it'll have like a. But that's the film thing. that really kind of started it all. But that's what started it, and so I think for nostalgia purposes, right. Blair Witch is actually fun to go watch. I think it's I think it's still like a good oh, movie. It's, a good, it's well done. Um. And there's some definitely creepy effects. It's just that I don't know, like, where people are seeing so much found footage films lately and what they're doing with them now. I don't know if it's going to appeal to a younger no. audience. And I would, I, I would agree. I, I, but I do think it is it is a noteworthy offering uh, from oh, Amazon yeah. in that, like, for not Blair Witch Two. No, when <laughs> no, again, let terrible. us never speak of it. Um, but when Blair Witch came out, I I know quite a few people, and it was it was I don't think on the news, but it was definitely rumor that we're getting like upset stomachs from watching it. Well, because motion did, sickness. Well, the thing is, is like what they did. The brilliance of it was also it was kind of also a pioneer in the kind of internet marketing. Yeah, it was amazing. It, it, the number of people that thought it was a real thing right was really pretty significant yeah because like, they were pitched a lot it of people. yeah because they pitched it like in maryland we kind of knew because it was yeah. kind of filmed here and i i luckily i got to see it at like a little like it when it was in yeah like small release because they showed it they premiered it one in, in the charles theater in baltimore cool so um like we well, in, like you know how like they open in like yeah, a few cities and a few theaters. So I got to see it early, um, and knew what it was going in, but it was pretty terrifying. Um, but when I went a month later, I was in Florida to see my cousin, and they all thought it was real. Yeah. So they were all like hook, line, and sinker. I, I believe on it. there was like a false website. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, all yeah, sorts yeah. of stuff. Like it was really, really smart the way they released yeah. it, and and I think just for all of those. It, particularly of anyone who's like you know of the age where they saw that in the theater going back like it's been a long time since i've seen it i'll probably go watch it just because i haven't seen it in 15 years i re i rewatched it about five years ago and i, I still liked it yeah, i mean yeah it's still good i'm sure it's still a good movie to watch it's not gonna feel like it did back in the day because no. it's not gonna feel well because a big element of that too was like it was before it was before the social media explosion. Yep. Uh, but yet it was you like You couldn't do a viral marketing campaign back then prior to Actually, they Blair were the Watch. first one I can yeah, think of it, doing Blair it. Watch, I, yeah. I can't think of another movie that did it before. That, they did that's it. exactly what right. I mean. Yeah. It's a, at least not in the way we think of it now. Right, right. So, yeah, I would say we kind of covered most of the Yeah, I just wanted to say like I wouldn't be doing due diligence here to say like if you want some real deep cuts on horror, go check out Shudder. Yeah, Shutter's a really yeah. good uh, streaming service for well, that. Um, it's also the only place I know of right now that you can watch Evil Dead Two. Yeah, I think that's right because that's on on a Star. subscription. Well, no, you can it, Ash vs Evil Dead. You can catch on Stars, like the TV show. Oh, my mistake. Yeah, yeah. but so yeah, if you if that's on Stars. Um, I just found out that we're gonna have to wait till February for the next for the season to start. Season. They were supposed to start it in October. I thought, but it got pushed back to February. I don't remember what offerings you can pick up Showtime on. Uh, I know you could go it's on, get... It's through Amazon. You can get it. You can yeah. get it through Hulu. You can definitely get the entire back season, but if you have not watched, if you like horror, and you've not watched Penny Dreadful, like all of the like classic uh, horror characters are touched in there. Right. You know, you've got your vampires, your werewolves, Frankenstein, etc. Yep. Um, so check out Shudder uh, for some, you know, some hardcore kind of, you know, horror. Yeah. Especially like Evil Dead. I, I like to try to watch Evil Dead 2 at least once, once a year. Right, yeah. <laughs> I did. I try to. I, I love that movie. If I still had, I need a, to see Army of. I haven't seen Army of Darkness in about five years, and I that movie <sighs> makes me laugh. I laugh my ass off every time I watch that movie. I I giggle with Army of Darkness. I belly laugh with Ar Evil Dead too. I do. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is with Army of Dark. I, you know what it is. I love. <laughs> I think there's some really good like Harry Harryhausen type 
like claymation going yeah. on in that movie. No, they're absolutely. And I enjoy, I enjoy that. So. Yeah. Well, and uh, if you haven't picked up on it yet, Dennis and I are both big Bruce Campbell fans. Yes. And Bruce Campbell is feeling his oats in army of darkness he really he is really it is like aside from ash okay ash versus evil dead is He's kind of like it up way is. over the top yeah. but his, the first hint of that is kind of like in army, army of, of darkness, darkness. Yeah. like his bravado really kind of comes out in that movie yeah it's great it's it's fantastic um all right so you know all the usual notes subscribe uh tell your friends about the podcast if you're liking it um leave a review on itunes or wherever you listen to podcasts uh yeah. we're pretty much in every podcast app out there we love emails and comments yep uh you can email us at podcast at ground you can comment on the blog at ground uh you can follow us on twitter at grounded reason go check out our facebook page uh more than happy to ask uh i mean to answer any questions comments you know etc etc um Thanks for listening, everybody. This is Dennis Rostaro. And this is Joel Reeves. Have fun out there. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs>